Hello builders, I am Laszlo and today I'm going to show you how to upload large files to S3 using API Gateway and Lambda. So let's see what is um, the problem here. Uh, when you upload large um, files with API Gateway and Lambda uh, to S3, you are going to hit some limits at one moment. So first of all, uh, there is a limit of uh, the lambda max payload size. So the max payload is 6 megabytes for uh, each uh, uh, request. And um, this might be sufficient for some use cases, but not for everyone. So uh, you might switch to another, um, another approach in which you integrate directly with API Gateway, skipping lambda altogether. This is possible through a direct integration in API Gateway with uh, S3. However, you will still hit some uh, bottlenecks. So the max payload size for API Gateway is 10 megabytes. So in this case, you can upload files up to 10 megabytes, but not more. Um, also, one other approach could be uh, that uh, you open up your uh, S3 bucket, but that's um, a big no in most cases. So the bucket where you want to upload the things uh, should stay private. So this is another uh, limitation that you uh, need to take into account. So in this case, there is a solution to upload uh, large files, and that is uh, through S3 pre-signed URLs. And how does this work, you might ask? Well, it's simple. You have um, the components here. So we have a user uh, who wants to uh, upload um, something. We have uh, the API gateway. We also have um, Lambda and we have S3. And let's see how uh, can we interact uh, between each uh, of these. So first of all, our um, user will send a request to API Gateway to get a signed URL. So then API Gateway forwards the request to Lambda, and Lambda has some code in which it will generate a, a pre-signed URL with the get signed URL uh, method. And it will return this um, uh, signed URL to the um, requester, to the client or user, whatever you want to call it. And then the user will use this um, URL to directly upload the file to S3. And in this case, our user is able to upload um, you know, large files, more than 10 megabytes, because it's no longer um, uh, um, have this uh, limitation of uh, 10 megabytes. Um, there's this direct uh, interaction between S3 and uh, the user. And also, uh, the bucket will still stay private. Uh, this uh, signed URL is only valid for a certain amount of time. You can set this amount of time. And uh, then, even if someone gets a hold of that URL, it's not able to upload anything. So now let's see uh, the implementation that I'm going to show you. First of all, this, in this video, I'm going to provide you um, a template. So basically, we are going to use infrastructure as code, a SAM template, which uh, I will share the link to the GitHub uh, repo where you can find uh, all this code. Then we have a Lambda function that uh, has the code for signing the, the URL. Uh, generating a, the signed URL actually. And we have a client. The client will do the, the uploading uh, of the file. I'm going to explain it uh, with the code um, in just a moment. So let's get started. So here I am in uh, Visual Studio Code and I'm going to show you the code that we're going to use. So first of all, here I have this. Um, uh, SAM template. So this SAM template has a few things in it. First of all, we are going to generate a bucket in which we're going to store the uploaded files. Then we have the Lambda function defined. Um, this will generate the uh, pre-signed URLs and it references the uh, bucket that we've created 
uh, before with this ref my bucket. Uh, it sets it as an environment variable, so the uh, code um, can use this bucket name. We also have uh, to have this S3 uh, crop policy. Uh, basically, when you do generate a signed URL, uh, your Lambda function um, needs to have the proper permissions for that bucket, otherwise the signed URL will not uh, work. Then we attach an API gateway um, to this uh, Lambda function with the upload um, uh, endpoint resource, uh, which uh, accepts a post uh, um, request. And uh, there um, you will get back the signed URL. Then we have uh, some outputs. It will output the, the API endpoint that you're going to use and the bucket name. Now let's look at the Lambda code. So this is the Lambda function. It's a pretty simple one. So it takes the bucket name from the environment variable. Then it generates a um, um, signed URL with the S3 um, uh, client. And it's uh, allowing a put object uh, operation on the bucket name and the file name that we are going to get from the event. Basically, uh, we are parsing the event body and getting the file name from there. This is sent by the client. Um, how long the signed URL expire? Here I set it at five minutes, so we have sufficient time. But you can set this as uh, uh, according to your own needs. Then we are returning the upload URL and uh, then uh, also the file name. And that's it. That's a simple Lambda function. Uh, and then we have the client. So the client is the one that you use locally to do the uploads. So you see um, here you will have to change the file name. Um, so I'm going to use this uh, test data, data, test data MP4 as a test file, which is larger than 10 megabytes. Uh, then here you have to change the API gateway URL that you're going to get. And here it first it will create a post uh, request. Uh, to the API URL, and um, it provides the file name after it used this, uh, uh, this, uh, these commands to detect the file uh, type and things like that. And uh, after it gets the response from the API Gateway, the API Gateway returns the signed URL, and then you use the put operation to upload the uh, file um, to that uh, URL. And you have to set the content type, which we detect a little bit uh, uh, more uh, up here. And basically that, uh, then you have also some uh, messages that you can get, and that's it. So how do you deploy this? Let's quickly deploy it. Um, so you're going to use SAM deploy, and you have to use guided. And let's see what happens. It will ask for us a few things. So let's make it bigger a bit. Um, the stack name, let's call this S3 signed files, for example. I'm going to use US East 1. Um, OK, confirm changes before deploy. Allow role creation. You will have to choose yes, because it has to create a role um, for the Lambda function. Um, disable rollback, yes. Um, my Lambda may not have, uh, is this OK? Yes. Save the arguments to a file. So next time we can run just SAM deploy. It will be saved all the configuration to this SAM config toml file. We're going to leave this on default. And now it's going to um, do its thing. It's basically uploading the, uh, the package to uh, S3, this deployment package for this uh, application. Let's wait a little bit more until it finishes. It will start deploying our stack. Then I'm going to show what it has created in the AWS console. So let's click on yes here. And I'm going to pause the video until it finishes so uh, you don't have to look at this being created. So it took about a minute and uh, everything was deployed. Now let's uh, go to the AWS Management Console and let's see what it has created for us. 
So I'm going to go to CloudFormation. There you can see the SAM um, stack that was created, S3 signed files. And if we look at it, what kind of uh, resources it has created, it has created a bucket for us. Let's open it. We are going to need it later. It has created a Lambda function and it has also created the serverless REST API. So this is the Lambda function. You can see the code, but it's there. Uh, the API gateway uh, is also here. It also has a stage. So let's grab this um, uh, stage. So you need to copy this URL here um, and go back to um, here to the client and replace here this part uh, your API gateway URL. And the upload should stay at the end. Okay, so this is where we're going to get the S3 signed URL from. Okay. Um, and let's change the file name. So test data mp4. And basically that's about it. Let's now use the client. So you, you use it like this. Uh, node client js. And it will basically push this file, this test data mp4, uh, to S3. So let's wait a bit. And it says files uploaded successfully. Now let's verify that. Let's go back to S3. And here uh, we have this bucket. Let's refresh. And you see it's test data mp4. It's a 15 megabyte file. I could just uh, download it. And. Uh, run it so it uh, actually opened in a, on another screen it's a video that is uh, running so that's uh, about it this is how you upload larger files um, to um, s3 using api gateway and lambda you will find whole, the whole code linked to the video in the uh, github repository uh, one final thing i want to mention here is that um, some people might ask, okay, but why do you use API Gateway and um, Lambda? Uh, because if you have this client, you could just skip all these, generate the um, signed URL from here, directly from, um, from uh, this client, and upload directly to S3, skipping the whole API Gateway and Lambda thing. And that could be a valid approach for some of the uh, use cases. However, you see here, I'm not using the, S, uh, the AWS SDK at all. So this all happens through um, post requests and uh, put requests. I don't have to use the uh, AWS uh, SDK. And um, um, this could be the case where you cannot run for some reason the SDK. Uh, you can do this approach. Or in other cases, you already use the um, API Gateway in Lambda for other things but um, you have just this bottleneck where you are not able to upload um, large files because of those limitations. In these cases, um, you can uh, use this approach that I have shown you and it will allow you to uh, overcome all these things. But of course, you could um, uh, just use signed URLs from your local client if that's easier for you. So this is the video for today. Hopefully it was useful for you. If it was, uh, click on the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, hope to see you soon with another video here on the channel.